Today we're going to take a fairly in-depth look at how vMix works with virtual sets. This is a going to be a fairly deep dive, um, and it's going to require some uh, understanding of things not vMix, like uh, XML um, and maybe Photoshop would be a, a minimal example. So what I've done is I've loaded up my virtual set, and you can see vMix has this virtual set tab, and I've only I've loaded a few sets in here. Um, vMix does come with an example of a UV map virtual set, and that is what we're going to be talking about today: are UV map virtual sets and the XML that drives the assembly of the virtual sets. So the demo UV map um, virtual set works that comes with it is a UV mapped set, but I'm going to be using um, Studio 207 today which is one that I loaded by browsing to it in our, um, our library. So uh, studio number 207, I chose B wide, and I'll get into the XML part of it in a second. But first, let's put it together. So the set comes up here, um, comes up with these four different camera angles, and you can see it's missing some content here. I'm just gonna put it in program. And to set it up, we click setup and from this layer drop down, we see the different layers that we have to work with. Uh, the first one I'm going to start with is talent. And I'm going to select my, um, I've got this video clip since it's a full head to toe video clip instead of uh, the shot that I have now, which is just chroma key to about here. It's not going to look right unless I put myself behind the desk over there. So I've started by selecting um, myself and you can see that uh, I've already chroma keyed it, cropped it, and then it's being scaled into the set. And if you look closely, you can see the reflection. If you don't want to look closely, let's zoom in on it. So one of the four zoom positions, and we'll get to how those are assembled, is a, a, a three to one zoom in. So you can see that's quite a long range um, to zoom in on, but let's, let's get in closer until we deal with another element that's not in view. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my center screen input. And I'll just pick, um, let's see what this is. Yeah, good enough. Not aspect correct, but um, it'll it'll have to do. Let me just see. Um, do I have, I probably have, no, that's not going to work. I'll, I'll just stick with this for now. So I had created some aspect correct content, as you can see in the left-hand window, it's actually the same set, just a much closer angle. Um, because this is a very long and um, very wide, wide screen. So I'm going to zoom back out now so you can see the rest of the set. You can see the, the nice reflection that's created there. And then we have one more uh, screen. There's a desk over here, and this should be called Desk Screens Input. And we'll just put um, our browser over there. So you can see that your browser is now being mapped to the screen if we were doing a close-up shot of the desk, that's what would be behind them. And then there's nice reflections in this, this floor here. So we've configured our set and uh, we can take a look and see if there's any other things that we wanna change around here. There's background, um, the room itself, the center screen, and I can turn these things off. If I wanted to make this center screen go away, I can just click visible and now there's no center screen. And it's two parts because one is the actual screen and one is the graphic. You can kind of see the, the reflection popping in there. And if you look closely, you can also see, well, here, since you're probably watching this on a stream on a little screen, I'll zoom in. If you look down here in the lower left corner, when I turn this off, you can see that the reflection disappears as well. So it's important when you're building these sets to be editable within vMix that all of the different components um, kind of work together. And then let me go back out to wide. Um, the desk screens are the same. And then we have things like truss. You know, we can turn that off. We can turn the talent off, but that's not, not going to be very useful. And then we can turn the desk as its own layer. So how did we build this? And I'm going to start by walking you through the structure of um, the different layers in this folder. So this, this folder contains all of the different elements for this set. So you can see the desk is here, the desk screen is here, the um, truss is here, and then there's an 
overarching, this is the main structure, I call them room. How you end up labeling these things is going to be entirely up to you. But let's take a closer look at um, this. So this is a UV map. And once you get it, it's actually really easy. Uh, once you understand that this is, let me open this up in Photoshop. Once you understand that it's the gradient is routing the incoming video based on um, two different colors. I'm going to zoom in on this. So this is the talent map, and it's a 16-bit image. So if you look up here, you see it says RGB 16. And the reason for that is because in 8-bit, there isn't enough video to define an HD image. So if you multiply 1920 by 1080, it's less than uh, 256 times 256. Whereas in 16-bit, there's millions of colors. There's a, a, an enormous amount of definition um, that can be had there, even in, in up to the 4K range. So up here in the left, color black, 0, 0. And we can see that we're only dealing, we aren't dealing with blue here at all. We're dealing with red and green. And red, so it's not 255, but I'm, I'll use 8-bit numbers um, just to keep your brain intact. So let's pretend this is 0 to 255. So 0, 0, 0 um, RGB is going to be 0, 0 on 1920 by 1080. And then um, 255 by 255 by 0 RGB is going to be 1920 by 1080. So this image is mapping um, the entirety of the incoming video source. And we can cut and edit this however we like, because Photoshop is capable of editing 16-bit videos. And then down here, I've created a reflection. And it's kind of hard to see because it's transparent. But you can see that um, this is, uh, the, the yellow part here is kind of missing. You can't see the yellow. It starts in on the red because that's cut off by the floor. So the reflection is kind of trying to be accurate. And then it's also got some ripples in it, which you can't clearly see here um, to give it that that rippled impression. Let me go back to zoom in on it. And I'll, I'll loop this. Um, and I'm going to zoom down on this. In case you never knew, you can adjust camera angles by just right clicking here. So I'm going to zoom in and then down so we can have a good view of the reflection. So you see, it's just reflecting my head because that is what it would accurately be doing. And you can also see it's reflecting the what's on the video screen behind me, regardless of what I put there. And that is all being handled by this gradient image. And the important takeaway here is this is not an 8-bit image, even those are using 8-bit numbers um, to try to explain it, because to use millions of colors, that would, that would just be confusing. Um, this is what's handling that whole scaling. And we have one of these for each element where we're scaling things. So we have desk screens. If you look at the desk screens, what I've done is I've mapped, and, and you can even see that the desk screens have some reflections in the window across the way. They're very faint, so you might not notice them easily. Um, this, again, black uh, 0, 0, 0 is going to be the upper left corner of the image. And then you're missing kind of part of this because of the angle. You're not seeing the left-hand part of, of that image. So you're seeing the right-hand top, right-hand bottom, right-hand top, right-hand bottom, left-hand top, left-hand bottom, and then whatever reflection is available. So these are how the UV maps work. You can use a color gradient to create these, and it needs to be in 16-bit color. The other things here are just basic elements. Uh, there's the background window. And then now I'll take you to the important part, which is the XML on how this scene is built. I'm going to zoom back out for this so you can see the whole thing while I'm talking about it. So um, if you're not familiar with XML, this is going to be a learning experience for you. Uh, hopefully the whole thing is. 
So the way the XML works is it's structured. If you're familiar with HTML, it may seem vaguely familiar, but it's it's just a you know there are there are structured tags. This begins the virtual set. This end ends the virtual set. So um, this is an input tag, and you can see it begins with input and then some data and then the name of the file that we're referencing and then an end tag. And these need to be rigorously correct because if I took a, if I just took an end off of this, it wouldn't, it would just throw an error when I load the set. If any of these files are missing, it'll throw an error when I load the set. So you need to learn to make sure that, you know, these are rigorously correct or it's going to throw an error. These Different lines represent each a layer. Uh, so you'll see this one says the name equals background, and you will find in our setup drop down tab it begins with background, and it goes through background, room, center screen, center screen input, and so on. And when I come back to here, you can see that the names background, room, center screen, center screen input, and so on, down to overlay, which since it's a desk, I could rename this desk. And um, because the I, I noticed that I would want to change this background. This dynamic field here says that it's false. I want to change that to true. So even though this isn't a um, UV map, uh, I want to be able to make changes to it. So right now, previously, it was fixed. You couldn't make a change to how that worked. Whereas now, since I've changed to, dynam to dynamic, when I reload this, we'll see that we can actually change that background for something else. And then taking another look further down um, at our first or our bottom most UV map input, it actually says UV map and then equals center screen.png, which if we go over here is our center screen.png. So the XML is both simple and complex. It's complex in that you need to be rigorous. It's, it's, uh, it, it needs to know exactly what you want and it needs to all be correct. And the other things in here are you can, each individual layer can have an X and Y position and an X and Y zoom. Since all of my elements are designed to line up without um, moving them around, they all show up as X, Y, zero uh, and zoom of one. And then last in the XML is the four different zoom positions with their names. So I call this one close up, medium shot, full, and then custom can be whatever I leave that one for users to decide. And then there are positions. Again, if I wanted to zoom into the upper left or zoom into the upper right, that, that's where I would define these things. Um, in this case, all I've done is I'm just doing a straight zoom in and zoom out. A zoom level of one uh, is going to be wide, full, um, the 1.5 is going to be a small zoom, two is going to be a 2x zoom, three is going to be a 3x zoom, and four is, in our case, going to be a zoom all the way in um, because the resolution that we're using is four times HD. So if we go further than that, we'll begin to break one to one. Let's save this, and I'm going to close this out and load this guy again. And we'll see what changes that we made, if the changes that we made are correct. So first, let's throw our talent in there. Let's throw me back. And what else did we change? So we, we made it so that the background could be changed. So when I select previously, the input option was not editable. And now I can put um, the loop in there. And that's not, not really what I was shooting for, but it could be, you know, my camera. So hey, I'm peeking in the window. And then what else did we change? Um, we turned that from false, and then I renamed I renamed the desk layer, which is not 
a profound change. But instead of saying overlay, this now says desk, which is more informative than it previously was. So that is, in a nutshell, how vMix works with virtual sets using UV maps and XML.